Welcome to today's episode of Kezcast, where Patrick and Ricky will be talking about uh, the American dream as a corrupting ideal in The Greats of Wrath and The Great Gatsby. Over to you guys. <laughs> okay. So, we think it is uh, corrupting. <laughs> Straight it's to a the good point, place Ricky. to start. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, should we give a bit of historical background first? Go for yeah. It. You, you go ahead. Okay, please. so... Um, the American dream has been a part of the kind of general American psyche for decades, well into the 19th century. Like before. it's always been there. Even it's always, before, it's always even been there. Even before the yeah. term was coined. But um, uh, the fact that it first appeared, as in the term that we know in American dream, that first appeared in a uh, uh, informative piece by James Truslow Adams in 1931, which he which was called the Epic of America. And actually, he planned to call it the American Dream, but that he was dissuaded from doing so by his publishers because people deemed it wasn't kind of corporate worthy and it wouldn't sell well. Hmm. So that, that's, that's probably a classic example of how wrong they were. <laughs> yeah. The irony. And um, so, yeah, the Epic of America, and uh, that, that coined the term, then it spread across. And that was in 1931. And if we consider the fact that F. Scott Fitzgerald was probably at the peak of his writing powers in the 1920s, then his work is virtually, well, is prophetic of the Wall Street crash and of uh, The Great Gatsby. Had an idea, had an idea, even without using, yeah. you know, he did, he, did, he did kind of describe it as a dream, but it's, he, it's, uh, he didn't use the, the phrase precisely. But. It's one of, most, one of the most traditional examples of the American dream in The mm. Great Gatsby, uh, a character striving so desperately for something his entire life. Mm. Uh, and for Fitzgerald to have written that before the ideas really coined, I think, demonstrates how pervasive the concept was in American mm. society. Uh, exactly. And even some of the prose is quite dreamlike, mm. isn't it? Yeah, quite, yeah. You know, he does. Yeah, he has a particularly kind of um, almost kind of orgastic style. Particularly when he's describing the green light, to Gatsby mm. sort of yearning yeah. out across across the water. There's some. There's definitely something kind of sense of almost kind of longing throughout the book. I think mm, definitely, definitely in Nick Nick Carraway, and I think it's almost. And it kind of epitomises, well, not only, of course, Gatsby, yeah. but you see examples in it in all the characters. So, for example, Myrtle is yeah. a, another clear example of the American dream kind of almost in practice. Yes. And, uh, and uh, again, Gatsby and Myrtle both inevitably fail. I don't think there's a single person in, in Gatsby who, you know, doesn't have a dream of, mm. some, for, of some form. Yeah, and I think it's almost, it's almost like kind of, you get a sense of, it's... Not, um, I know I say kind of almost F. Scott Fitzgerald kind of mourning for... For Zelda. Exactly. His, his, who the book's dedicated to. Mm. And mourning for the, the country that he lives in, the kind of, the, the kind of, well, he perceives it as kind of a decadent nation, really. Decadent, uh, and glorious, mm. not glorious, but full of, full of extravagance, munificence. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and Gatsby characterises all of this, a boy from a, 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 you know, a poor, disadvantaged mm. background, changes his name, joins the army... And then creates a life and a story for himself. Mm. He, de- he decides, he shapes his own path and who he's going to be. Mm. And you get the impression that Gatsby truly could be one of the greatest Americans of all time. Mm. But then he gets caught up in this notion of this desire to repeat the past. And to go back and to meet with Daisy again and to fall in love again. And it's this memory that really prevents him mm. from, from doing everything he could. And it's that memory that kills him in the end. And I think, yeah, he sees... You know his kind of Gatsby's kind of total belief in the American dream is the true reason for his downfall. And it's oh, yeah. it's the ultimate corruption in in the um the novel. And I think you also get he obviously he doesn't just comment on that. He acknowledges many of the other kind of um corrupting influences in society. So I think obviously there's kind of Alcohol, obsession with gambling. consumerism, gambling, uh, materialism. Gets all his money from illegal and I think uh, there's there's a, a great there's a great image that kind of appears throughout the um the novel. I think which is the idea of the shirt and so. Uh, Gats, uh, um, well, Jay Gats is, is James, uh, Gats, James yeah. Gats, and uh, he uh, he's he wears this kind of. So the idea of a shirt is that obviously it covers you. It's something wealthy, something you can uh, in, see straight away on the person. It's an identifier. So Myrtle says that claims that what attracted to her initially about Tom Buchanan was his shirt, <laughs> and uh, so it's again purely superficial. It covers Very you. Attractive. It's a, it's a it's a <laughs> yeah personal. <level. laughs> yeah, always, <laughs> always yeah, loved what it. a compliment. Yeah, and, then, and there's uh, the scene where. Um, Daisy uh, is in his kind of closet and starts throwing the shirts around. And they're such beautiful shirts. Yeah. So it's the idea of... Um, she cries, doesn't she? She cries, yeah. doesn't she? Yeah. And um, it's a sense that um, 
the the an illusion really it's something that's covering you it's not really real and i think that's almost what he believes the american dream to be kind mm. of something that hides what the truth of his nation i There's... think some are, sorry <laughs> some other uh people probably think that as well because it's almost like gatsby obviously before the end of the book is successful in the american dream because he mm. gets all this wealth and whatever but He's... then you have the buchanans who are old money aren't they mm. so even though he's achieved all that he's still new money and it's kind of to them they think that's an illusion mm. in a yeah. sense does that make sense the disparity yeah. between appearance and reality mm. you know illusion and what's really going on is something fitzgerald is very keen on drawing to light and mm. focusing on and mm. i think it helps that he uses nick carraway to sort of highlight mm. that he's I, an unreliable narrator exactly mm. I, you, you, we see for classic examples of the party so we see the first time we see gatsby's party we see it through kind of his rose tinted glasses we see kind of he what he perceives almost as a beauty and he's, he's got well he at the moment he describes it as an amusement park the the initial party and then obviously that can be seen as something wonderful and something kind of fantastic but obviously there's also the other side to that where amusement park is kind of full of debauchery and and then later on when tom buchanan attends a party he then goes on to describe it as a menagerie and so you get you get the the contrasting views of it yeah. so you can mm-hmm. see you can describe it as many different things but in the end. Tom Buchanan will never respect Gatsby. No, exactly. Gatsby could be the president of the USA mm. and Tom Buchanan will still go, yes, but where did he get, where was that money coming from? Mm. Mm. And Tom, you know, Tom will never see Gatsby as anything more than, you know, new money. Mm. And mm. like that's, that's corruption of the American dream in that Americans don't respect those who succeed in it. Mm. Yeah. And I, th- I think we see that, uh, that idea continued into the present day. You know, oh, you God, still yeah. get the glass ceiling. You still oh, yeah, get the, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, I think um, obviously people there's a sense that um, there's still always a sense that particular people in particular parts of society the cannot rise. The oppressed minorities mm. will always fight harder than <laughs> white cis het men. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's the, another example where I think Greg Gatsby was a very kind of, mm. well, a very long lasting warning about the dangers of America yeah. and the mm. dangers of his kind of trappings and the thing the American dream is. Yeah. 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 Mm. And I think the idea of appearance and reality, we think, is also integral to the Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath. Mm. <laughs> what a book. <laughs> um, yeah, so Grapes of Wrath is set after, after the publishing of the Epic of America. Mm. So, um, you know, Steinbeck has that work to mm. look at and appreciate. And he, of course, he has Fitzgerald's work as well. But where, where Grapes, the Great Gatsby yeah, picture, depicts the consequences of the American dream uh, during a time of prosperity, you know, um, the Grapes of Wrath takes a very different look at it and he looks at the mm. effects of the American dream in a time of complete and utter crisis. You know, mm. the country really is falling apart. There's never been wider divisions, I don't think, in America, apart from, of course, uh, Native Americans and white mm. Europeans, but not, sin- not since has there ever been such huge division between the haves and the have-nots. Mm. And the Joads, in their, su- their search for the American dream, is that image of Calif- California that image of wealth and of course when they get there and i think yeah and what the, exactly the instant you see that it's not what they um aspire to be and i think uh while the overriding emotion that probably fitzgerald was filled with which kind of the kind of sense of kind of melancholy really throughout the great gatsby i think really what what drives um what drives uh through the greatest of wrath is sense of anger and Resent- i think yeah uh, resent is that and i think that's a sign of how times changed mm-hmm. so you've got steinbeck writing from a, a sense of political protest really oh yeah and so mm-hmm. he, while uh both of them are certainly i think both of them are certainly warning certainly protests about not only the american dream but the idea of the divisions in society i think there's a sense that times had got so bad by the time you know because of the dust bowl because of the the huge immigration issues mm-hmm. that when the grapes of wrath re- be- became as controversial as it was it was because, you know, the sense of disillusionment had turned to a sense of anger. I mean, mm. by that point, unemployment was you know, rising up to like 25%. Mm. It's, it, you know, it was impossible f- for anyone to do to do anything about that. Really, that's how it felt. It felt, it felt, and it felt in Steinbeck's work as well, the futility and the sense of bitterness mm. and helplessness and desperation and vulnerability these people were feeling. And you, you, when you read Groups of Wrath, you're struck by the inhumanity of, of what's happening to these people. And I think that's because the American dream, this, this desperation for success, is being prevented, people are being prevented from achieving that uh, in the Grapes of Wrath by, by the system, by yeah. the establishment, mm. and by society. I think uh, you get that sense of the, the difference between the appearance of the American dream, the reality of the American dream, even in the first chapter of the Joe chapters, oh, yeah. when you see uh, the slot machines. 
and uh, in, instantly straight away you're thinking that's a you know you, you're given the it's you're presented the opportunity to win something in the the uh, the slot machine the slot machines, but really uh, you can't then you don't win anything from it and mm. it's fixed and I think that's another and it example. It can become an addiction. You keep yeah. trying, but no matter how much you keep trying, you're yeah. not gonna. Those those that. materialistic dreams mm. are left unfulfilled, mm. just as in in Gatsby. Mm. Uh, you see a. Another fantastic example is he the contrast he draws between the kind of the wealth of the land of California, and uh, and what the actually detail. happens exactly. So in the, one of the, probably the most revealing into kind of chapters in the novel, which is chapter twenty five, um, we see he starts by describing the uh, kind of almost kind of fertility of the land and plentiful, you plenty, know. a place where he can get so many crops. He describes the oranges, these kind of golden mountains. He talks about the farmers and how they're like they're, they're doctors, they're scientists, they're these mm. great, fantastic, clever people mm. who do beautiful work who really mm. could you know improve this country and you get a, such a sense of hope from the mm. opening of that chapter and then at the end of it you're struck by the idea of kerosene being sprayed on these kind yeah. of golden yeah, mountains starving people just you know taking nets down to the river to try mm. and fish the potatoes out that have been thrown in mm. and then guards mm. physically holding them back mm. and mm. this is you know you've got two human beings there and one is saying no this food is for no one and mm. the other one's like my children are dying Mm. Please, can I just have something to eat? Mm. Yeah, and again, you get that the corruption throughout the entire novel, in, in especially I think yeah. not only the kind of the corruption between uh, men and the banks and the kind of the buying of the land, but also the corruption of the American dream. I think it's so important that there's not a real villain in Grapes of Wrath. Mm. There's there's no one really throughout the novel where you go, he's the one doing this to them. He's mm. this guy mm. is the reason. You know, you meet these deputies and these sheriffs, but. Uh, you know, almost everyone you speak to about it, they say, well, the, the farmers say, well, there's nothing I can do. It's the bank. The bank's putting debt on me, so I have to lower your, mm. your, your, your wages. At the very beginning of the novel, the guy on the tractor says, I have to feed my family. Mm. Mm. If you want to do that, you should ha have a tractor as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's the same in Great Gatsby, really. Mm. Would you say... Well, I, I wouldn't say there's, like, one villain, is there? No. Mm. I think the, the Buchanans are certainly vilified to a certain extent. But, but I, you know, Daisy yeah. is romanticised well, massively. Well, enormously, in, but again, it's the, through Gatsby's eyes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, what's actually really... Um, but Nick doesn't blame Tom at the end. So exactly, I just wanted yeah. to jump in on that point. <laughs> like, it just, just came into my head. You know, Nick shakes his hand right then at the end. And you get the impression that, you know, Nick's saying that I'm not turning you into the antagonist of this story. You're not mm. the villain. You're a symptom of a society that is corrupt mm. and is mm. you know, a bad thing for the people that live in it, a bad thing for everyone who lives in it, mm. regardless of if you're old money or new money, mm. east or west. Mm. I think another really interesting part to kind of question about the two novels is, you know, why they're so obsessed with this idea of the American dream, because, you know, uh, you know, throughout American uh, history, there's a sense that the American dream is really one of the kind of the big parts of the national identity. Ambition. Exactly. It's, it's America's, you know, defining trait. And in a, in a country... We do for more. In a country that has so much immigration, so much social divide, so much differences between the two people, I think people really latch on to this idea of the American dream because it's something that it, they kind of re think it really defines them as a mm. nation. And, and the, it, it's... The boxing thing. Exactly. Mm. Uh, so, you know, you get the idea of, even now, the idea of the American dream is continued where in, you know, throughout all, throughout all the society, but also in the idea of, of sport and boxing. So yeah, it's the same with basketball, but to a certain extent, you know, there is a reason why the kind of people you see uh, throughout American history being boxers are usually uh, black, black African-Americans, because these are people who are living in impoverished backgrounds who have no way of getting out of their situation, and they're faced with the uh, opportunity of quite literally fighting their way out mm. of degradation. And there is, and this, there is this aggression, aggressive mm. side mm. of exactly. the American dream mm. in, both of, for it. in both of the novels as well. In the what what lengths do people go for mm. go to for, to fulfil this dream? And mm. it is such a materialistic dream yeah. in these novels. In Great Gatsby as well, it's about this lost generation, isn't it? And you know, yeah. after the war, um, so they are searching for something, mm. and they've been used to fighting and having a clear mm. purpose, and now they have that same sense of lack of purpose, and they don't know what it is mm. anymore. And that I think fits into the American dream. They latch on to yeah. this. Mm romanticised goal. It's this idealistic principle that they've mm. got in their head. They've defined it and they've defined their dreams. Mm. But the, the the actual process of achieving those in, is in some cases insurmountable. It's it, mm. it, it, impossible to achieve. Mm. You know, particularly in Gatsby's case, this this mm. you know, his desire for money and yes, for, for money, yes, but and but to to go back 
and to do it all again, to have everything he had 10, 20 years ago. It, it's, 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 there's no way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah, Nick tells him that. And Gatsby's so blinded by his vision. That he always refuses yeah. to accept that anything else could exist. Yeah, know? exactly. Mm. And I think uh, we see that's the, the theme of the American dream kind of appears throughout of Fitzgerald's canon, not just in The Great Gatsby. These four years later, he wrote a short story called The Swimmers, mm -hmm. which is obviously lit on the eve of the Wall Street crash, where he mm. took, again, before the Epic of America was written, before the American dream was even coined, uh, there he wrote about how the American dream only applies to 1% of. Uh, of the nation and it's a shock when you realise that you are the 99% that will not be satisfied mm. and you are the ones who will take part in the lottery and not win and mm. that that is we there's coining the American term sorry coining the American dream as a lottery mm. is has been notified by a lot of uh, different critics and that's why I really liked sorry no, please. <laughs> uh, that's why I really liked the um, image that you brought up of the slot machines. Mm. Uh, which chapter do you say that was? Uh, that was the chapter the very, two, the first Joe chapter. Chapter two, yeah. Because it they are like these machines specifically ma manufactured to give people hope, mm. give people this idea that they're going to win. But the people who made them mm. know that they're not going to. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the perfect metaphor for this mm. system that people have made in America, mm. and and for the yeah. American dream. And there, it's there's... manufactured to give people that. That hope. That yes. hope. That's yeah. The hope False. is their traffic, really. Exactly. In... These people are so they're, they're so they're so desperate to have this idea of hope that they almost can't can't visibly perceive the deception, or you know, or they're so they they they're so desperate for the for this chance, this mm. opportunity, that they're unwilling to see the deception mm. because they can't face that alternative. They mm. can't accept that they're they are being beaten down and there is no way through this. They have to latch on to this, mm. this dream of fulfilment, of opportunity, of satisfaction. Mm. I think the handbills in The Greater yes. World are a fantastic example of that. It's, so he's, he's so good at picking out certain images that just fantastically sum up that what he's talking about. You know? uh, you've got the idea of, so not only the slot machines, but the handbills, how they present an image. They tell you, they, they tell yeah. you a lie, quite literally. They say, yeah. uh, this, this, well, you'll get paid this much. Yeah, and then we, when you we get need there, we need eight hundred men, but mm. how how many handbills do you hand out? Yeah, yeah. over over a hundred thousand. Yeah, and uh, then uh, again the idea of appearance in reality, and so it's not something that really you can actually sustain. Exactly. It's like mm. uh, even you even get that in the kind of the more um, uh, gen kind of generous parts of the story. So you got the wee patch camp and how that if it, it is it's a it's a kind and it seems to be a very forgiving, but at the end of the day. You can't no exactly. You can't stay there forever. You'll eventually have to leave and pursue Just the dream again. And um, it's it's interesting how in Grapes of Wrath, Steinbeck demonstrates how you can use the American dream to turn migrants against each other mm. to prevent mm. unification. You know, when, when there's a strike going on, you go and ask other people to come in and work, and they're the strike breakers. Mm. And when the strike ends, everyone's wages drop. Mm. You know, this this the chance for to become something more is being prevented by the system mm. at every single turn. It's always so. a competition, isn't it? It's yeah. always, yeah. Um, yeah, and I think you were saying earlier about the sort of different tones of Great Gatsby and how Grapes of Wrath is so much more angry. It's almost like um, in Great Gatsby, it's the characters themselves who are sort of kidding themselves. Mm. Uh, you know, they're kidding themselves into um, believing that they're fulfilled yeah. when deep down they know that they're not. Mm. Um, whereas in The Grapes of Wrath, you know, during the depression, post Wall Street crash, it's obviously so obvious looking at all these people in poverty, yeah. looking at these mm. migrants, you know, in such times of desperation, it's obvious, like, you know, what a state mm. your country is in, but the leaders of the country and the banks and the yeah. industry are trying to say, no, 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 it's all fine. And yeah. that's why there's this anger, because it's so clearly not, and people aren't kidding themselves anymore. It's like Gatsby's dream is unachievable because his dream is to repeat something that's already happened mm. but the Job's dream is on a you know it's it's simply to you know just have a stable life and it's unachievable because it's the establishment are putting so much pressure on the 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 most disadvantaged mm. people mm. i think um uh, if, if we've considered the kind of contemporary response to the novels, I think we can also see the example that actually even people reading these novels couldn't accept that the American dream was Nazi. So mm. uh, if you think the, the critical response to The Great Gatsby, um, uh, it was described as obviously unimportant <laughs> and a dud. And yeah. uh, you see, so... A classic, obviously. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so even then, people wouldn't, after reading these kind of revealing accounts of the American dream, revealing what uh, they considered to be 
yeah. the uh, untruths of it. They they don't they don't trust the 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 account of Fitzgerald and Steinbeck. So you know Steinbeck was throughout throughout all America was hailed oh, as a communist. He was he was he was a red. He was a mm. socialist. Yeah. You know, and the book was banned and burned. Mm. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. You know the the U.S. the capitalist <clears throat> government there, and I don't want to put a political bias on this. <laughs> but, um, but I'm absolutely just, going to put a just, political bias come. on this. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, they, they did. They they put this massive massive prejudice in American society against socialism, mm -hmm. and it, it's still there. It's still there now. Mm -hmm. You know, you say the word socialism, and people turn around and go, "Oh, you must be a communist. You yeah. must be a red." You know what? You know Steinbeck. He, you know, I'm not saying I'm not saying he was a communist, but he was definitely a socialist. Mm -hmm. um, people people didn't like that. On yeah. a moment of, of focusing on kind of political discourse in America, this is entirely relevant to the American dream, but uh, <laughs> the uh, 19, the film of Animal Farm, which is animated, uh, the original right. animated cartoon version of yeah. it, uh, mm -hmm. was actually funded by the CIA because, uh, <laughs> um, because um, there was a sense, such an anger toward the kind of the Cold War mentality mm -hmm. in Russia, communism. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and the, uh, the CIA funded films that presented an anti-communist message and spread yeah. them across. And I think mm -hmm. that, that, that kind know, of... Presenting a scapegoat and using fear or so the migrant workers or mm. yeah yeah America put that in place they the, the the system there tried to prevent unity among the people and mm. so you know the it, it was much harder to unite mm. these workers which is something Steinbeck really does put into his it put into his book in the final moments of Greats of Wrath it's that moment of unity isn't it mm. and yes. compassion and, that's that's yeah. where I feel that's where they really do achieve mm. it's a different American dream to the one they started with mm. it's not the same material outcome that they that, that there was mm. their focus on the goal the image of California but through being able to stand together with other people and care for other people mm. you get this real sense of actually what what America was intended to be yeah. this is what it was mm. supposed to be this is the land of the free the land of liberty and these people standing together make it make it happen mm. okay um I think we're running out of time, but like, I think that's a really good point to end on if you're happy to end there. Yeah. Do you have anything? Um, I think we've talked about that. That's really good. No, Thank you. Well done, that was really good. Very good.